It's a great honor to uh, welcome our um, Stanford's 11th president, uh, Dr. Mark Tessier-Levine, as a keynote speaker this morning. Uh, Mark uh, became Stanford's uh, 11th president last year on September 1st, so we have a new administration um, leading us into the new era. Uh, Mark is a pioneering neuroscientist, biotechnology executive, and academic leader. Uh, I'm, I'm here holding the bi biography of Mark printed by Steve, and it's really, really long. So uh, I, I will just pick a few very impressive uh, facts of Mark. Uh, prior to joining uh, Stanford, Mark served as the president of the Rockefeller University in New York City, which is a leading biomedical research university. Uh, Mark was born in um, Canada and uh, received his uh, undergraduate degree in physics at McGill University and then, his, um, uh, and then philosophy and physiology at Oxford University where he was a Rhodes Scholar and he earned his PhD in physiology at uh, U UCL University, uh, university College London and uh, uh, subsequently held faculty position at uh, UC San Francisco, uh, Stanford University, and then um, where at Stanford he was the Susan uh, Ford Professor in the School of Humanities and Sciences, and then he went, uh, became an uh, investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Mark is a, um, has made tremendous contribution in the basic science of uh, molecular neuroscience, and for his work, he, became, he was elected a member of the National Academy of Sciences and National Academy of Medicine, is a fellow of the Royal Society both at UK and Canada, and um, uh, Academy of the Medical Sciences and American Association of the Advancement of Science and American Academy of Arts and Science. <laughs> and uh, I'm not done yet. <laughs> he uh, also in 2003, Mark um, uh, was recruited uh, to Genetech and became a executive vice president for research and chief scientific officer. Uh, directing 1,400 uh, scientists in disease research and drug discovery. And uh, he became uh, um, the president of Rockefeller in 2011. And uh, long story short, uh, 2016, Stanford welcomed Mark back as our president, and he's here to share some thoughts with us. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. Well, thank you, Fei-Fei, for that uh, very kind introduction. Uh, and I also want to thank you and Steve for inviting me here to the forum. I, I do want to downplay expectations. Uh, Fei-Fei said I'd give a keynote address. This is really just a few words of welcome uh, to all of you. I don't want to get in the way of the, uh, this is very exciting program that you have. Uh, the, the Stanford Computer Forum, as you know, is our largest industrial affiliates program. We're fortunate to partner with all of you, more than 120 uh, member companies from Silicon Valley and beyond, uh, and we're incredibly grateful for your participation uh, in today's flagship event of the, the forum with a very exciting program. So I just want to make a, a few remarks, uh, uh, partly to convey my excitement, partly to convey the support of the university for all that you do. Um, uh, uh, you do not need to be told, in fact, uh, you are telling us uh, uh, how um, AI advancements are occurring at lightning speed. We're incredibly proud of the work of uh, the people here on campus, our faculty, our students, and, and others. Um, we're proud of the uh, Artificial Intelligence Lab, which was founded in the, the 1950s and, and really has become an intellectual hub, uh, an education mecca for students, and really is world-leading uh, with cutting-edge research. Uh, we're also proud of the um, seamless interface between uh, Stanford uh, and the private sector uh, and all of you. Uh, this is something that uh, has marked, I think, the way Stanford goes about its business uh, since its inception uh, and really um, accelerated in the 1950s with the legendary Provost Terman, um, who really uh, helped set that, uh, the tone for interactions between the, the public sector and the, the private sector. And the aim, of course, is to 
uh, to partner with all of you so that uh, the discoveries that are made in the lab can be applied to the real world and bring benefits to, to humanity. And facilitating that interaction, that interface, we think is of paramount uh, importance. We have to, of course, deal with potential conflicts can, that can arise, but uh, we should not avoid them. We should manage them. Um, and we should try to facilitate um, the application of the uh, advances in knowledge uh, that are made here um, and also in all of your uh, institutions. It's really quite remarkable to think about what uh, we can do today with computers that just a few years ago seemed like science fiction, um, a result of uh, both more powerful computers, more data, and also more powerful algorithms and bringing them all together. Uh, from my own field, I work in the life sciences uh, to see the impact, uh, for example, well, in many areas, but genomics is a clear area where the data sciences and um, uh, uh, machine learning are uh, really helping us understand uh, the, the human body and disease in a much more accelerated way and uh, trying to identify genetic risk factors and uh, causal uh, gene variants uh, that uh, contribute to disease. Uh, computer vision, uh, natural language understanding, robotics, virtual reality. I had the pleasure of uh, visiting the virtual reality lab uh, here at Stanford. One of the first things I did when I came on campus that just blew me away uh, in terms of what can be done today and also you can see the potential for the future. Autonomous vehicles, of course, and much more. And uh, the, the potential is really thrilling to the imagination if we think about the impact that it can have, uh, that all this can have on disease, on poverty, on climate change, on economic instability, on so many societal uh, problems. So bringing those tools to bear on those problems I think will be extremely important uh, and extremely enabling. Uh, I think I'm, I applaud the fact that as part of this conference, in addition to talking about uh, uh, extraordinary technical advances and, and making the impossible possible, uh, uh, you will also be spending some time talking about the social uh, impacts of uh, the work that you're doing. Uh, the goal ultimately of AI is to help humans live better, safer, healthier, more productive uh, lives. At the same time, I think we're very mindful of the fact that rapid technical um, uh, advancement requires an in increased consideration of uh, the, the social, um, uh, moral, ethical impact of, uh, of the technologies on employment and other aspects of life. I think we're all familiar with the fact that uh, in this country, 8% of adult males uh, earn a living driving a vehicle, and autonomous vehicles are going to disrupt that workforce in very profound ways. Uh, and so it's very important for us to think through the consequences of that and what can be done to mitigate uh, that and, and understand how we can harness technology um, for good, but also with potential um, uh, unintended consequences uh, that we have to uh, try to think through in advance, anticipate and mitigate as best we can. Stanford is a great place both to explore the technology and also to explore the social impacts of, of technology. I think one of the, for me, uh, coming back to Stanford, I was here on the faculty, as Fei Fei said, in the early 2000s, uh, one of the extraordinary things about this place is that we are so deep technically, uh, which you know, as scientists, as technologists, we are all thrilled about. I'm a biomedical scientist. But equally, we have that breadth of disciplines, not just the sciences and engineering, but also world-leading social sciences, humanities and arts, extraordinary professional schools, law, business, education, and medicine. And uh, having that collection of people enables us to tackle both the applications of technological advance to all those fields, but also the social impact of uh, technological advance um, and, and try to, uh, uh, as I said, um, understand uh, and help lay the groundwork for mitigation. So uh, it's, and, and I think this ties back to the fact that uh, uh, one of the great things about Stanford is that we are, of course, focused on excellence uh, and we, we strive to be excellent, to be world leading in everything that we do, but we don't do it just for the sake of excellence. It's excellence in service to humanity. So we promote excellence in research, in education, in service, in service to humanity. And I'm, I'm pleased that uh, the, the conference captures uh, that ethic and ethos um, as well. So you do not need to be told. Um, uh, you know well that you are really at the center of one of the great revolutions that's occurring in human society today. 
Uh, I just came back, uh, we were in Boston, I met at MIT with the, the authors of the book that many of you will have read, The Second Machine Age. We're in this, The Second Machine Age and it's fueled by the work um, that you do. It's really an extraordinary time. Uh, there couldn't be a more exciting time in this field and we're excited that you've chosen to come here at Stanford to explore how to move things forward uh, in uh, the most impactful ways. So I want to thank you um, for the opportunity to join this event. Thank you very much for the invitation to share these very brief thoughts and, and uh, especially the warm welcome that I want to extend from the entire family, the Stanford family to all of you. The work you do is so incredibly important we're extremely proud of the partnership that we have with all of you. We're excited for all that will come next in the field of artificial intelligence, and thank you for your leadership. Thank you very much.